Well, hello everyone. It's after Christmas and we have been working on a project. Brian has been working on a project for most of the year. Off and on. Off and on. We're getting ready to replace some of our solar electrical equipment for the house. We have been in the house since 2007 and things are aging. They're not as efficient as new stuff. And also you never want to get to the point where these things break because you just can't go down and buy a replacement. So today I'm going to let Brian explain to you what we're doing, why we're doing it, and all that stuff that most of it I don't understand. So Brian, it's all yours. All right. All right, so hi everybody. So what we're doing here is that our house is powered off grid. Okay, we have solar um, uh, photovoltaic uh, uh, panels. Uh, we used to have a wind generator that we're not going to that we've taken down. Uh, and then we have a generator back back up along with solar ther thermal that we have up on uh, that we have up on our roof. Now, uh, a year ago, a video or a year and a half, probably a year ago, I think it was no, no, almost two, I think. almost two years ago. Uh, we went ahead and replaced our old um, AGM, or actually they were VRLA, valve regulated lead acid batteries that we actually purchased in 2004, 2005, really didn't get them online until 2007. That was part of our original uh, off-grid power system. And uh, there was a video out on that and you will probably find a link for that either up here up here could be down here i don't think it's over there but more than likely it's up there or wherever so uh the thing is is go ahead and link to that and that goes and shows the whole process that we went to to swap out our our aging and although they served us well vrla uh, sealed batteries that we had but we went ahead and replaced them with a set of lithium iron phosphate bad batteries which we went from about three tons of batteries down to maybe around 800 pounds here or 900 pounds here Vicki went ahead and moved that and this is our battery box that we built like I said everything about that is in the uh, video description of the whole process that we went through on this now one of the things is is that our inverters which have been very good inverters I'm not going to complain about these at all these are, these are uh, uh, very old uh, Trace, or what is now known as Xantrex, uh, 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 SW uh, inverters, 24 volts um, and, uh, and 4K, 4,000 watts, watts each. Um, one, half, one inverter powers one leg of our house, the other inverter powers the other leg of our house. Uh, one of the things about these is that they're old, they don't know how to really deal, especially the charger part, with the lithium ferrophosphate uh, bad batteries that uh, we have, plus the charging part, the charging half of these uh, are actually starting to act up a little bit now. Uh, and they just don't know how to really behave well with the lithium ferrophosphate bad bat, uh, batteries whenever I run the generator to charge the batteries because we've had a cloudy day or whatever I really have to sit and watch these and and actually I'm the brains behind making sure that we don't overcharge the lithium ferrophosphates and destroy them you're the brains behind this whole system oh uh, well I got a very small brain surrounded by a really thick skull so uh, the other thing is, is that we have two charge controllers here. All right, so the charge controllers, uh, we replaced these about five years ago, I think, when I did this. Uh, right here. Yeah, right, right. That's the guys right there, charge one, charge two. And uh, these are actually what uh, are connected directly to the solar pan panels, and they control how the power from the... Uh, uh, from the solar panels is going to be used to charge the batteries. 
all right, when the sun is up. So we have charge controllers for the for the sun and the photovoltaics. We have in the inverters, we have chargers that actually are hooked up to the generator when we have to charge our batteries from the generator because we haven't had enough sunlight. So these are midnight and they're very good. I have no complaints about these at all. They have worked very well for us. Uh, originally we had some of the older Trace ones, then I went to MX60s from Outbacks. Uh, couldn't really handle the load of the panels that we were installing, the extra panels. And so when we did that, we went to the uh, Midnight uh, Classics here, which are, which are very good and are still able to uh, charge the lithium ferrophosphates, but again, they don't know about them. All right, they don't have the profile specifically for these. And again, I have to kind of undercharge things with these. So I went to, so we're going to a more modern uh, charge controller that actually knows about the lithium ferrophosphates. So in a project like this, this is a big deal to swap this out. This powers our entire house. This powers the entire house. There's, when you're living off grid, or anything where you're not tied to municipal u uh, utilities, there are certain things you don't mess with. You don't mess with your water. Okay, you make sure that that is solid. Don't do anything funky or weird there. Same thing with your power. Okay, and you can also say that as far as the sewage or the septic goes, but you know, if something went really bad with that, you can always go ahead and dig a hole somewhere, right? I think you wouldn't like that. Though. No, I wouldn't. But. But the thing is, is that, to, is that to swap out where we're about to show you what we're moving to, this has to be disconnected from the house, from the photovoltaics, from the generator, actually from the wind generator, but that's all going away. And we have to swing these cables over to the new mounting structure that was built for us by one of our neighbors. And, and, and if things don't go well, to recover is going to be a major pain in the fan and could, be, and could involve considerable down, down, uh, downtime. I've worked in data centers as an engineer, IT field engineer, infrastructure engineer, and so on for He's gosh, a geek. 40 years. Has it been that long? Probably Not more. No fart. Probably more. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so anyway, what we do there, if we have a, you know, some storage or a server or a mainframe or whatever it is I was working on, if we needed to bring a newer model in and replace the older, we would do what we would call a push-pull or a pull-push. So you would have your system here that is up and running, working, connect, uh, connected, is actively being used and then elsewhere you would stage the new system make sure it all comes up network connectivity storage the whole nine yards fully test fully tested out and then during a maintenance window you would pull the old unit out and then push the new one back in and then bring it up and you minimize your downtime and your risk that way okay so this is going to have, we're going to do this the exact same way. This is going to facilitate having to remove this gray box with these inverters. And by the way, this whole thing here probably weighs about 300 pounds. All right, the inverters themselves are a little over 100 pounds each. And also it's going to need to do a new battery box. Okay, this one worked just fine. Not getting rid of this. I'm going to turn it into a fermentation chamber for my beer. For, for my home brewing. He has ulterior, ulterior motives. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And I planned this ahead. Back like, I, anyway. So, so we have a new battery box, a new form factor for everything that is going to be moved, that is going to be moved in. And what we're doing today is my brother-in-law is coming over who has been very helpful. He's, he's actually been very key in putting, helping me put this system together. Um, basically, he did a lot of the wiring, and I sat there with the flashlight saying, gee, Don, that looks great. All right, so, um, so, so that is what we are doing today. 
And what we'll do is we'll go over and look at the new system that we're going to be replacing this with. So the new system that we have is made by Outback Power. They've been in the business for a long time. They actually had inverters that this whole system that you see right here, albeit a much older you know, inverters and charge controllers and everything. But actually, back at the same time that we brought our original system in, our, our tracers and tracks uh, syst uh, system in. And so we're moving to this now. It's an entire power wall. Uh, here we have what are called the FM100 charge controllers. These are the latest and greatest. They understand lithium ferrophosphate batteries very well and will be able to put a proper charge profile all right on our battery bank this is a dc distribution box or combiner box and this is where everything dc comes into the system all right and we have our main breakers for our charge controllers and for our inverters here um, and then these are the inverters we have two of them about 3600 watts each so we have two we have a master and then we have the slave here and this is the ac distribution box for everything that the house where we're going to swing over um, you know the uh, uh, feed to the house and the feed from the generators all right and this is the mate 3 this is the main system controller for the entire uh, power system here this is networked it's networked each one of these devices the uh, the um, uh, inverters the charge controllers uh, the flexmate uh, monitoring system and everything is all basically controlled by the mate 3 there's a hub back here i don't know if you can see it that much vicky's going to try and get back and get back here but this actually networks all of these together and then under control all right of the mate 3 and then the mate 3 is going to be tied into our home network all right and then we'll be able to access this system via uh Outback's uh, Optics RE uh, cloud-based monitoring and management si uh, system for their power systems here. Now, this whole this whole power panel is mounted on a structure, a wooden structure, structure on wheels. Vicky will show you that right now. Our neighbor Greg uh, went ahead and built this for us. And, and so the, so the thought is, the plan is, is that today, when my brother-in-law Don gets here, we're actually going to provision this whole pan panel. We're going to pull two batteries out of the battery bank, I mean out of the battery box. We're going to connect them up into the DC side of this. And then we're going to go through the whole provisioning process, get this guy networked, make sure we have the latest firmware so that we know that this entire power panel is good and that there are no problems at all. Because it's better to know it now before we roll this into place. I mean, think back what I said early about, earlier about what we do in the data centers. All right, we have a server or storage, a network router, or whatever that's that's old we're going to replace it we go ahead and provision build get a new one totally up and operational and then it's a matter of pulling out the old and pushing in the new and that's what we're going to be doing here we'll show you what the end result is and uh, you know maybe even some of what we did to pull it out and put it back in but but uh, uh, that's kind of what we're doing here so it isn't like we're trying to do this all in one day without a tested unit. Although all the components in here were tested, they have never been together in a single panel like this because I had to build this up from pieces, from individual components, because our batteries are still 24 volt. And the power panels that they have totally assembled from Outback, which is a good system, uh, and uh, all tested, they did not have that for a 24 volt system with the FlexMax 100 charge controllers. So as a result of that, uh, I had to get this, Vicki and I, we had to buy this as individual components. So everything you see here was just in boxes. 
<laughs> and then uh, mount everything, assemble it, and then my brother-in-law and I went ahead and wired everything up. And our neighbor built the stand. And our neighbor, Greg, went ahead and built a stand on this. And there's a battery box, if you'll shine down, if you'll go ahead and put the camera down there. There is a horizontal battery box that goes right across the front of this that has that where our batteries are going to be moved to. It has a lid on it. It has a fan to, to help it cool. Keep the vent, cats out of keep it. Keep the cats out. <laughs> cat, keep the cats out of it. And that's another totally different piece of this that we'll go that we'll go ahead and show you as we get that uh, put uh, put together. But it's already built. It's already there. And it's just a matter of moving it into place now. Once we test this out, we know that this is all good. So, so that's pretty much it for right now. And we will keep you updated. There will be a full video for this with a link back to when we replaced our three tons of batteries of lead acid, valve regulated lead acid batteries with the lithium ferrophosphates that we have. And that's it. Uh, this is a view of our battery box with one of the lithium ferrophosphate batteries removed. And uh, we, this only shows one we eventually had to use two in order to successfully power up the, uh, the inverters. Uh, the next view you're going to see here is of the Victron bus bars uh, that really made this work of us being able to pull that battery out and uh, and use it to provision the inverters. Since they're in parallel, all we had to do was just disconnect the positive and negative cables and then uh, just go ahead and move it over and then connect it uh, into, the, uh, into the DC combiner box uh, in the uh, new power panel. Now, uh, one of the things that we did do is that I wanted to make sure that we had an adequate ground uh, so uh, what we did is uh, scrape some of the paint off of this pole that we have uh, in the foundation of the house and uh, went ahead and just kind of connected a, a, a ground wires wire to that and you can uh, see how we had that clamped on that. We had good uh, electrical connection there. Then this was for safe for safety and then of course we tied that into the main ground bus bar for the power panel here. Now uh, one of the things is, is that uh, we are going to have a second video on this that will actually cover the uh, replacement and everything that we had to do there. So this is part one of two or maybe even three uh, videos to cover this project. So we'll be talking with you soon. Thank you for watching. God bless.